Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, my name's Jay, Keller Williams agent down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Started my career here thanks to Phyllis bringing me over. Oh, and Anne Marie and everybody, but Phyllis is the reason that I'm here. Life. So thank you. Thank you. Um, typically, I like to move around the room a little bit more, but it's a little congested, so I think I'm just going to stay back here. Everyone's okay with that. That's all right. Gizzy used to jump on that. Get my <laughs> energy out there. Okay, so just a little bit about me so that you know I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. I am an individual agent, I do have an assistant. I've been, quote, full-time in real estate since 2018 when I did move to South Carolina with no friends, no family, no sphere of influence, and had to build a business from the ground up and found that my one thing was referral business from other agents. So I do service the Myrtle Beach area and surrounding areas. I was just telling Anne Marie earlier, we're the only market center for like 90 miles. Uh, that doesn't mean that I cover that far. Uh, so if you do have a referral for me, let me know what it is first, and if the price point in the area is right, I might be able to help. Um, agent to agent referrals were 75% of my business last year in 2022, which is down from 85% that was agent to agent referral in 2021. However, the number of referrals has gone up, but the percentage has gone down because those past referrals from agents have now become past clients and they have given me past client referrals, etc. So, what, and we'll talk about some of the lead generation levers, um, but I think this is probably one of the most underutilized and not as purposeful as people could make it and could really blow your business up. Last year, as an individual agent, closed about $18 million in sales, and our average price point, or my average price point, is $367,000. So, what do we aim to achieve today? And if I miss anything or there's something specific that you want to hear about, let me know. Uh, but we are going to define what an agent to agent referral is, determine where the inbound and outbound referral opportunities are geographically. Note on that, I do use a tool for the U.S. Census Bureau that is part of this. That tool is down for whatever reason, thanks to the government. So I do have graphics from another class that I taught in, in North Carolina. So we'll use those as kind of a template. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the data for Delco. So uh, we're also gonna work on how to build your network and your presence in the agent-to-agent -agent referral community. <coughs> a lot of my business comes from the relationships that I've built. And honestly, I'll get phone calls from people in Texas, Colorado, wherever, not that they're looking to send me business, and they'll say, hey, I need an agent in New Jersey. Who do you recommend? just because that presence is there and people trust me. Uh, how to win the agent to agent referral interview. Just like a listing appointment, when somebody's trusting you with their friends, their family, their past clients, they're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're right for the job. So you might be up against and competing against other agents within your office or other agents at different brokerages because not all of these are going to be Keller Williams agent to agent referral. A lot of my referrals come from little mom and pop places who don't have the cool technology and networking relationships that we have here and uh, that we're lucky to have. Uh, we're going to figure out ways to best convey your value to the referral agents, what steps to take once you win the referral, how to keep your partner part of the transaction, and develop strategies to maintain those relationships with your referral partners so that you can create raving fans within the agent community. Does that sound like something that you can take out of this, or is there something that I'm missing that you really want to hear that's not on this list? Awesome. With that, we will move on. Now, like I said, there's some things that are missing and things that we can't do just because that system is down. Uh, so this is supposed to be about two hours. It becomes more conversational, probably like an hour and a half. So we might run a little bit faster, and it depends on the conversations that we have. There will be breaks for ahas throughout. Awesome. Am I pacing okay? I feel like I'm just running through this right now. I don't know if you're good. Okay. We're so. fast learners. <laughs> so Delco, you know we talk fast. Saying, I know. Fast. Well, that's the thing. Delco. I'm like, okay, I, I had to change how I spoke yeah. down south. Just side note, this is a little you know fun fact. I started doing my cold calls. I'd call expired with drawings. And I'd say, hey, this is Jay Gray, the Colorado Realty, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I see that your home came off the market. I was wondering if you plan to hire the right agent to sell your home. And they say, huh, <laughs> who are you? And then I'm like, oh, so I had to tone it down. And now anytime I get on the phone with somebody from New York or New Jersey or Pennsylvania, I'm just like speeding through it. So I did teach this class in the South and it took two hours. So I 
really think I'll probably be done in like an hour and a half. <laughs> so this sounds like a simple question, what is an agent to agent referral? However, there are people who may not have done them before or don't realize the, uh, the benefits and what the, the real definition is. So you have two opportunities, and I think what a lot of people focus on are the inbound referral opportunities. How can I help somebody move into Chichester from wherever? That's great. An agent in another area connects you to a prospective client that's either looking to purchase in your area of service, or they already have a home there they're looking to sell, and you pay them a referral fee. But the outbound referrals are really awesome too, and we'll see how that ties into your marketing strategies for your clients that can also create referral opportunities. So outbound referrals are when you connect an agent outside of your service area to an agent that needs rep or to a client who needs representation in that agent's market and then you're paid a referral fee. Now, of course, that referral fee is discussed between you and the other agent. 25% is reasonable, and that's my standard. Now, some people wanna squabble over 30%. I always push back when I'm asked to do 30%, especially if it's a buyer. If it's a buyer, you can get out of here with the 30%, okay? But 30%, and my average price point, that 5% difference is only 300 bucks or so. Do I really want to give away an opportunity that could potentially be other opportunities? And I'll also pay 30% happily on a listing, especially when I know it's going to be one that's going to sell rather quickly. So keep that in mind. Okay. <laughs> so where do referral clients originate from? This is whether it's your business or someone else's business, how do those potential clients that you're going to refer, where do they come from? They can come from your lead generation sources, they can come from your sphere, current clients, past client referrals, open houses, and also online web leads. And what do I mean by that? So any activity that you're doing, if you're lead generating the way you're supposed to, right? Whether it's to your sphere, whether it's giving you know, phone calls to people who come in through your social media, through your uh, whatever your CRMs that you use, paper clicks, whatever, there could be somebody who's looking to move to Delco and they say, well, hey, I've got a house in the Poconos and I, I'm moving to Delco. Great. People get this tunnel vision and say, I'm going to sell that person a house. Okay. And don't they have a home to sell somewhere else? You always want to ask that question because you could be leaving money on the table and potentially putting your deal at risk if you don't know who's working on the other side of that. Anything that you do to generate leads is also an opportunity to find referral business, whether it's inbound or outbound. Okay, so here's the part where we are going to shift to North Carolina stuff just because the web tool is down. Um, but one thing that I do use that is working is called How Money Walks. And I haven't used this a ton, this is something new that I've taken a look at, but what this company does, and it's free, is they look at IRS tax returns somehow, and they see where people are going and where they're coming from, and it's the money. So it's not necessarily the number of people, but where is the money coming from? Unfortunately, Delco is in the red. Um, but, if you, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, you gained $1.68 billion in wealth from Philadelphia last year, 152 million from Montgomery County, 42 million from Hartford County, Connecticut, Baltimore, Maryland, Fairfield County, Connecticut. That's where people are coming in. That's where the money's coming from, or people who are buying in your area from outside of your area. And where are they going? So this identifies certain areas. So Chester County, $1.52 billion in wealth was lost from Delco to Chester County. So what we can do with these tools is I like to use these and the other tools that we'll discuss today to market my listings. If I have a listing and I say, especially in my market, my market's a little bit different just because it's a secondary home market, a vacation market, and now becoming a very popular primary residence market, but we still need to get the people there. We only have 5 million people in the state. Our entire metro area has like 400,000 people in like six counties. So. We're growing, and what I'll do is say, hey, I know that Long Island or Suffolk County, New York, is where my buyers come from. So when I have a condo at the beach, or an investment property, or even a primary residence, 
I'm going to target that particular area because I know the buyers are already coming from there. They're already looking in my area. If I can connect with them before they connect with their local agent, now I don't have to pay that agent a referral fee when they call me, but I can charge them a fee because I captured their buyer who needs to sell a home. So using these referral business information uh, data points, we can also use it to market our listings and, and grow our business that way outside of our market. So I'll click this link, that's the link there, and just to kind of show you how it looks. So we've got Pennsylvania. In general, it'll show you Pennsylvania has gained wealth from these states and lost wealth to these states. Pretty cool. Uh, so we've got Delco here. And you guys see that, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so again, where did we gain wealth from? Where did we lose wealth uh, to? We can check Chester County, see how they're doing, because they're in the green. That looks pretty good. Gained wealth from Delco, Monaco, Newcastle County, Delaware, Philly, and Bucks County. What's interesting is you see these counties in red and the surrounding counties are in green. So and it looks like people are, yes ma'am. I just have a question. Yeah. So just so I understand this right, so that's basically saying that people with that much like net worth have moved from those cities or townships, counties to Delaware County. That's correct. And then the opposite for Lost Spot too. Exactly. Okay. Pretty cool. And again, this isn't a, a definitive like, oh, this means that there were 30,000 people. This yeah. is just saying, hey, the wealth, the net worth of the people, whether it's one person or 500 people, are moving from these areas and going to these areas. And it's interesting to see that they're leaving this corner of the state and going to these kind of bordering areas. Uh, so that's just one little tool if you want to look at it. It's called howmanywalks.com. So one of the other tools I use, and this is a tool that is down, and this is actually a little bit more useful than the one that we just talked about. If you just Google, because the link doesn't work, uh, because the government is down, imagine that. Um, you, if you get, uh, search US Census Bureau flow map, and what it does will allow you to pick by county to see where the counties that people, the physical number of people are coming from and where they're going. Um, so I did a class in Raleigh, North Carolina last year. Uh, so I'm using the graphics from that just because I couldn't pull Delco's. Um, and that's Wake County. So this is kind of what the map looks like. And in this particular instance, the top counties that people were moving to Wake County from were here. And Horry County, that's my county. U.S. Census Bureau uh, Migration Map outbound, kind of the same deal. It, Wake County, North Carolina, it gives you a little bit of the overview, what the population was. Uh, movers to a different county that stayed in the same state, movers from a different county uh, that stayed in the same, same state, and movers that went to a different state. Um, and it, it's cool because it color codes them a little bit so you can kind of focus on where the people are going and where they're coming from. Same situation, this is where the clients were going in North Carolina. And all of this stuff is available for Delco, it's just down today. That's the website, if you wanna go there. I'm gonna try to see if it works, and it did not, scheduled maintenance. All right. We also have the KW Command Referral Map. Has anybody here either found or received a referral through command? Okay. I would like to ask, just because I think this is a good conversational point, if you received or sent a referral through the command referral tools, and at some point in time you've also had or received or given away a referral not using command, what were some of the pros and cons to the command <coughs> referral? If anybody who's experienced that will discuss that. Well, I feel like that initial like referral form, no one ever knew how to fill out properly. Mm -hmm. So that was always an issue. Like who was the sending sending broker, who was the receiving broker. So I feel like that was always just yeah. kind of pain in the neck. Call, did you have any call? It was it was pretty smooth. Um, 
both cases, one I sent out. Um, I researched the area before I contacted the agent. I contacted three agents, picked one for a referral. Um, they were in Florida, so they were very accustomed to it. Um, and the inbound one was the same. The agent I was dealing with we used it, so it was really seamless. Gotcha. I start back there. Um, it's been a while since I've used it, maybe six months, but you could sort by production, listing and buy sides. Uh, you can kind of wh whittle it down to what's relevant to the referral you're looking for. Yep. So I thought that was nice. Obviously it's in-house, so Absolutely. You know, it keeps it within the company. Exactly, and that's one of the things I'll touch on here in a second as well. Um, so as a tool, the tool that works is the one that you use. So if you use this and it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you can find another way. But the really cool thing is if you go into the KW Command Referral Map tool, it will show you as long as those referrals are run through command, because not all the time, and that is not necessarily 100% accurate, because I might do a referral that I don't put in the command, so it doesn't show up on this map. However, in this particular case, this is my market center, that little green spot, and it shows where they're coming from and where they're going. And as the gentleman in the back, I'm sorry, your name? John. John. As John had said, you're able to search the areas for agents that you think might be a good fit. Now, everybody's different. Some people think that production matters. Like, hey, it has to be somebody who does over 10 million. Okay, well, you can search by production. Hey, I want somebody who's 100% listing. You know, that's what they do. Again, you can look at that. The challenge is, not everybody's in command and utilizing it the way that they should be. So you might send a request to somebody and they don't get a response. Uh, every now and then I'll get an email that says, hey Jay, add me to your referral network. And then I click it and then I gotta log in and then I'm like, oh, this guy just sent this to everybody. He doesn't really have a referral and then I get out of it. But it really does work if you use it and there's some good information in there. Any ahas thus far? <coughs> I love that there's tools that, I don't know if anybody else knew about them, I didn't know about them. So I love that there are those tools that you can look for. And you're always looking for other ways, you know, our family and friends, we only have so many of them and they're only going to buy so many houses. So this is just another branch that we can, when we're looking for business, it's, it's another way that we can do that. So I love the tools. Exactly. And I, th I think that's important when you're talking about you know, friends, you. family, flesh, that's family. Thank you. Um, by the way, if I say anything that's contrary to our experience, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, Jay's gotten many of my referrals. Jay's yes. part of my family now. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And Deb and I, we go back. Um, but the, the interesting thing is if you look at your business and you track where your business comes from, and you say, hey, it's 10% online lead generation, it's 25% cold calls, it's 30% past client referrals, is there any percentage or is there any room for improvement to where you could implement that lead generation lever of referral business? Because somebody's getting them. Is it you or is it somebody else? Mm -hmm. And are they scattered? Maybe, let's just say, I, I, I wish that um, we had our MCA in here, but I don't know if you know off the top of your head how many referrals the market center sends or receives on a regular basis. We, we do pretty good, but I don't know the exact number, but yeah. we, I mean, I, I would say, you know, can we do better? Absolutely. Right. But we do get quite a few referrals. Right, and, and that's the thing is it's, it's probably mm -hmm. scattered. Or too. agents give them, I should say, because I see that. Yeah. I sign the checks. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they get them. So, so they're working. <clears throat> exactly. So it does work, and it, it for me, was my one thing, and um, it has really helped me. So I think if you just turn it on and, and are intentional about it, even if you say, hey, I just want to get five referrals this year, and that's mm -hmm. five more than I had last year, and you know, think of what your average commission is, is it worth that amount to network and shake some hands and meet some new people? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. Well, the cool thing for you too is you went to an area, you know, where you didn't know anybody. Exactly. Uh, so you had to figure that out. You know, you didn't have, and you know, all your neighbors that you knew forever and your family right there, you, you didn't know anybody. So I think that was really cool that you did that. Exactly. Well, I appreciate that. And I think if we look at what you're saying where we have our friends and family and they're local well do they have friends and family that aren't local and we, we tend to forget you know hey i'm top of mind in my sphere for them but am i top of mind in my sphere so that when their friends or family who are out of town are looking are they still going to call me do they know that i can help 
a lot of times people don't know. They're like, oh, well, you're in South Carolina. You can't help me in North Carolina. Well, yeah, I can. I know a lot of amazing people up there. Let me connect you and earn 25% of that commission from that agent who will be more than happy to pay for it because the ROI is pretty good when you didn't have to do anything except take a phone call. Mm -hmm. Well, I was telling you, I know on the behind the scenes, somebody will say, anywhere in the Carolinas and Phyllis and everybody will put, Jay Gray, Jay Gray. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, you know name, I see your name more than, than well, I, do. I love that. And I know you don't live near all those places, but you know, you can help. Exactly, I'll be awesome. in touch with the right people. So making the data work for you and your business. So we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Uh, social media platforms and groups. Uh, can I stand by? Oh, yes. That is to connect with Rockstar Referral Partners. Social media platforms and groups, that's my number one source. We are crowdsourcing information. You're getting in front of 30,000 people at a time. We're going to touch on what they are later, but is anybody here in any referral group on Facebook? Okay. You think so? Uh oh. So I there's a ton lot. out there. Uh, we'll talk about what they are. There are some that are okay. KW specific, which I'm a huge fan of because we're protecting mm -hmm. profit share. However, we can't be everywhere. So if there's a place that KW doesn't service and we have to go outside of the company, that's fine too. <coughs> These social media platforms and groups are really, really beneficial. And what's really <laughs> cool is I've asked people, hey, how do we come to connect? And they'll say, you know, I heard from Brooke that you were a guy to give the call to. Or, you know, I didn't want to see all the hype, so I just went on and I, you know, searched in that particular group, Myrtle Beach, and your name popped up a lot. So the more that you're present, the more people see it. And trust me, if you put on in one of these groups, hey, I have, I need a referral partner for blank, your phone, your email, your Facebook messages are going to blow up and it's annoying. But it's a good way to make connections with people. Um, again, doing targeted campaigns on where your clients are going or coming from for your listings that you're advertising. Uh, market centers and agents in those areas. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Targeting the agents because this is an agent to agent referral. Using the KW Command Referral Network. And one of the best things are regional and national events. Uh, highly recommend. Family reunion and mega camp. Uh, you know, if you're going to family reunion in February, make sure that you're allotting time to socialize because yes, all the breakout sessions are awesome and very informative, and more business probably gets done outside of those. You know, at dinner or having a drink or whatever it is. Where is uh, that? What's that? Where is that? It is in Anaheim, California, February 18th to the 21st or second. So Jay, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Let's do so it. with regard to your business, let's just say last year or since you've been there, your referral business, which is obviously huge, do you feel that you get more referrals from online stuff, basically online, I guess that's what you would say, or from people that you've met in person? I would say it is a combination of both, and I think it starts online. So as an example, and I'll use KW specific stuff predominantly just because it kind of flows better. There are KW specific referral groups on Facebook. And you have a connection with somebody, or maybe you do a deal with somebody, you've got to get that initial win for somebody to say, hey, that person, you know, Phyllis is an extension of me. If I'm recommending Phyllis, it means that she's you know, a reflection of who I am. And once somebody raises their hand and says, hey, Phyllis is the person, then they're like, okay, cool, I'll send Phyllis one. And then you start building this relationship, and it's like, hey, when you're at family reunion, let's get together. And honestly, I started, again, not knowing anybody. It started on social media, and just through the organic growth of relationships, and aligned with some of the top agents in the company, and we go out and have dinner and drinks and, and you know, party at family reunion, and it's awesome. It becomes like this close-knit family of referral partners. So I don't know if that answered your question uh, so when you go to the office in the morning and you're doing your morning lead in are you reaching out to other agents or to your sphere <coughs> or other people who have bought and sold with you in the past it doesn't do morning lead -in. yeah i should probably okay. so but i'm going to just give you answers that I, I think you want to hear now um i lead gen to 
potential clients and to other agents. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. Because there's a way to do it. And you're probably already doing it with your, your sphere. And you're probably already doing it with your clients. Why not do it with other agents? Um, so this looks like a lot. It's not. This is just some tips for the social media presence and how to build that up. Um, tell your story regularly. Share your successes. Share your experience. And show your value. I know people say like, oh, I hate, you know, I don't want to be that agent that always puts my stuff on Facebook. And it's like, but why? Well, people are going to get annoyed and they don't want to look at it. If they don't want to look at it, they're not going to look at it. Mm -hmm. But when you put it out there, there are people who are looking for you that are looking at it. Um, I'm going to pause on that right there for a second. One of the really cool things, and I was just saying how your lead generation that you're doing with your clients and your uh, past clients and your sphere and things like that, you can just flip a switch and do the same thing with agents. And the really cool thing about whether you're sharing your successes on social media or sharing your listings or advertising, targeting them geographically, there are other agents in our market that are probably watching you as well. And by doing these things, you also can potentially create relationships with people outside of KW that want to be at KW, which then build your profit share. So a lot of the things that we're doing here compound on each other. And when somebody says, hey, I need an agent in XYZ, and it's all KW agents and the you know other company agents like, oh my god, they must be doing a lot of business and a lot of referral business over there. Hey, one in every 4.62 homes last year was sold by a Keller Williams agent, which means that there's a pretty good chance, a 25% chance, that the person who sold their home in Ohio was a KW agent, and they're gonna look for a KW agent. So that creates a desire for people outside of our little club to wanna to be a part of it, and gives you an opportunity to have conversations around uh, profit share. Sorry. So you mentioned the word club. So what I'm seeing in a lot of these referral groups is that people that teamed up with like the club, and what happens is you'll see somebody post, and they'll post that person in the club name and they'll be an hour and a half away two hours from that mm -hmm. from that I want to say target that these people are looking at. it's just I don't know to, to me it got annoying because the same people get referred and they're not even nowhere near yeah and I'll, I'll touch on that oh sorry Susan I have so she, that sees, was, she sees it quite often yeah and and you're absolutely right and that's why Keller Williams came up with the referral network through command was to try to because a lot of the top agents were like I'm busy during the day I'm not going to be on social media all right. day long and they wanted to push towards you know production and whatnot rather than these fan groups exactly and I want to clarify when I was saying club I meant our KW family as a club and I know what you're talking about and I'll touch on that in social media and there were but I'm a fan club so yeah well that's just, <laughs> and this, is, this is what I love so there used to be things that people refer to as fan clubs where agents would pay, and they still might be out there, I don't personally know of any, but people would pay to be in this fan group and say, well, hey, I'll refer you if you refer me, and I'll pay 250 bucks a quarter or whatever, so that they were all sharing this stuff. And you'll see in these social media posts where people say, I need an agent in Miami, no fan clubs, please. And to me, I get what they're saying, but it also kind of bothers me because it's like, well, wait a second. Not everybody who has a ton of relationships that they've built are in a fan club. I, yeah, I have a club of fans because I treat people right. So there, there's a difference, but what Jason's referring to is the people who are just like, oh, well, I think that's the person, so here you go. And I mean, it happens. We can't all know everywhere either. I mean, I get, hey, you're near Charlotte, right? I'm like, no, that's in North Carolina. It's three and a half hours away. And I know somebody I can connect you with because you just did that for somebody in our office, didn't you? Yeah, somebody I did. Because we put your name out there. Oh uh, gosh. Because I don't know Carolina, so I don't know what you're close to. Yeah. So I'm just like, I was like, oh, north, south. I don't know. Yeah. Down there somewhere. And then you said, oh, I don't do that area, but I know somebody that does. And this is a perfect there, example. So. It was last yeah. week. I forget the gentleman's name, but it's in my phone. Uh, he texted me and said, Hey, I heard that you're the guy to go to. I need somebody in Jacksonville, South Carolina. I said, well, Jacksonville's in North Carolina. It's way up there. And I said, well, what's the situation? And he has a uh, military family that's looking to move there. I guess they just got restationed there. And um, I said, oh, well, one of my good friends lives there. 
works there, and I was just on a panel in Jacksonville because we opened up a business center up there. So I uh, was able to connect him with that. I didn't get anything out of it except the value that I was able to give and say, hey, right. remember me next time. But your friend in Jacksonville yeah. will think of you when he needs something. Exactly. So, I mean, it's you know, very you reciprocal. Any instant gratification, but down the road, I think you will. 100%, exactly. absolutely. <laughs> um, so you wanna make sure that you're keeping your personal business pages active, uh, connecting with agents in other markets. Go on your Facebook and you know, go into Keller Williams referral network or do whatever. Go find people and just start adding friends. If they're probably not even gonna know who you are, then you probably have mutual friends with them, right? If they're with us and they're gonna say, okay, and they accept it, and now they start seeing your stuff. And they're like, huh, okay, that person's in Delaware County. Oh, that person works Chester County. And when it comes to time for them to meet somebody here, they're going to think of you. We talked about joining the real estate referral groups. They have catering specific funds, industry-wide ones, and there's also niche groups. You know, if, if you're in luxury, or commercial, finding those groups, um, you know, with KW, with our uh, equity push that we're doing, there's, uh, you know, KW, Rainbow Network, there's all kinds of stuff out there. If you have something that fits you specifically, there's probably a group out there, connect with those people that you have uh, those likenesses with. Uh, participating in forum conversations, contributing, somebody says, hey, I in one of these social media groups, hey, I've got a client that does this, what's your recommendation? Be careful not to give legal advice, and obviously we don't know that particular state's laws, but it's good to help. It's good to contribute because you're coming from contribution, you're providing value, and so I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? That person knows what they're doing, and they help me out when I needed help, so when I have a referral, I'm gonna send it to Anne Marie because she was the one who helped me out. Uh, so here are some Facebook groups to join right now. Uh, lab coat agents. Uh, there's a lab coat agents and a lab coat agents referral group. It was run by a KW agent, but he's no longer with KW, I believe. Uh, but this is a kind of an industry wide referral network. There's the Keller Williams KW referral group. KW referral group, the original and largest, strictly KW group. Bold. If you've attended Bold, the referrals I get out of there are typically like new people who are in bold and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm in social media and I'm in this bold group, let me find somebody. But if you've attended bold, join the bold group. Again, we've got like-minded people who are taking their education to the next level. So they're probably going to look there for people who share the same value that they do. Uh, Real Estate Agents Mastermind Group, uh, KW Agents Worldwide Official, and one of my favorites, Prop Share Mastermind Group, KW by <coughs> uh, Again, there's not necessarily people saying, hey, I have a referral in the profit share group, but like profit share is one of my like really things I'm passionate about with KW. So I'll get in and participate in conversations and people are like, oh, this guy knows who he's talking about. Let me add him on Facebook. Now we're friends, now he sees my stuff, he sees I'm in Myrtle Beach. You know, it's that, uh, what is that? Reticular activation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the more that you can be in front of these people, the more they're gonna think of you when they think of real estate. I see some people taking pictures, so I'll wait for this one. <coughs> Good, all right. Targeting your referral sources. Ad campaigns, personal touches, and relationship building. Targeting the consumer, we know that leads bring in listings and listings bring leverage. Home search and relocation landing pages local marketing in areas where visitors gather or travel. So, you know, for me, and again, it's a little bit different for everybody, but there's a way that will work for you. Um, again, relocation, hey, I know people are coming from Long Island, so I might have a, a landing page, whether it's through my command or through my CRM, and say, hey, have you thought about buying in blank and then targeting it to that particular place? Uh, I'm sure there's new construction subdivisions that you guys have, and you say, hey, look, We've got a bunch of new construction communities. We know that people are coming from Chester County or whatever. Let's make sure that we're targeting that particular area with what we have to offer, and that way I can bring in that lead source. Targeting real estate industry professionals. Uh, so agents where you know people are coming from or going to, targeting those agents, particularly the professionals and people in the leadership roles, your OPs, team leaders, productivity productivity coaches, and expansion partners. Uh, I know, Jason, you, you did some expansion, right? Yeah. 
technically, right? Did anybody else part of an expansion team, or do you have expansion teams here? We are. We just signed paperwork with uh, the Realtor Property Group, so we'll be bringing them in okay, uh, cool. shortly. Yeah. So. so Sure, so I'll touch on this briefly. Um, expansion is when an agent or a team of agents say, hey, we work out of the media office, we run super effective, this is our hub, and I love the Jersey Shore and I wanna open and run a team there, but I'm gonna run my business through my team. My admin's the same, your resources are run from the J. Gray team, but it's the J. Gray team of media and the J. Gray team of Atlantic City. Um, now, I don't, I don't want to step on toes, I don't know what the situation is there, mm -hmm. uh, but we had an expansion team from Charleston coming into Myrtle Beach, and they were like, hey look, you know, they crush it, they do tons and tons of business, they're like the number one agent in Charleston, and it's the Dave Friedman team. He was expanding in Myrtle Beach, and he's like, hey, we are physically not there, and we haven't gotten our talent there yet, would you be our referral partner so that we'll run the marketing We'll set the appointments, we'll do everything. You just hook us up and pay us a percentage and you're our referral partner until we can get boots on the ground up there. And that was really cool. So engaging with people and saying, hey, look. Okay. I bumped into an outlet uh, or something. Okay. Like you, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so by saying, hey, look, I'm building a relationship with this team who's expanding. You might be able to say, hey, I know that XYZ team, uh, they don't have a location here yet. Maybe I can have a conversation with them and see if they want to expand here. Show them why our market is where to be, create that relationship with that expansion team and say, look, I'll, I'll take care of it while you guys get off the ground. I'll, I'll help you out. Um, so there's an opportunity there. And then uh, property management or short-term rental companies, uh, more so in our market. <coughs> uh, crazy here. but. Uh, targeting the consumer. I'm not going to get too deep into this. Um, I'm sure you could, you know, Google or you have a command class here. I don't know. Um, targeting consumer, advertising your referral business target areas. You can do that through command. You create a campaign. You select a listing or images, and you say, "Hey, I want to be 50 miles radius of Belmar or wherever it is." That way, you're targeting those places uh, geographically. Here's an example of how I used command for a luxury condo development. I had a listing. Uh, so if you see, I don't know if you can see, it says uh, 100 North Beach, Charlotte. So I see the ad name as the location where I was running it. So I ran it in Charlotte, I ran it in New York City, and I ran it locally. And then I can see how they perform. They all had 10 days. And I believe I set it forty dollars for a cap on each one. Uh, you can see what how many clicks I got. Charlotte, I got two hundred forty-eight clicks. New York City, one hundred forty clicks. Locally, two hundred two clicks. Then it breaks it down to leads: forty, twenty-seven, thirty-one. Buyer leads generated: ninety-eight, which means that uh, oh, and because they were outside of my market, there were sixty-seven, which means I have sixty-seven potential referral opportunities. If they're living somewhere else and they have something to sell before they purchase this, that's an opportunity for me to potentially have a <coughs> referral. And my cost per lead is $1.25. Ma'am, I think you have a question. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm just confused. So this is a listing you had in, in Charlotte and then you yeah. advertised it in New York? So, yes and no. It's one that I had in Myrtle Beach. Oh, okay. So if you see where it says, uh, the address is 100 North Beach. Okay. So it's 100 North Beach Boulevard. I ran it locally, I ran it in New York City, and I ran it in Charlotte. That's and where the people are coming because from. Because that's where those people are coming from. Yeah. And I know that, especially Charlotte, not necessarily people are moving there, but they're saying, hey, I live inland and I want a house on the beach. So we do a lot of people from the Charlotte market. Uh, so again, thinking bigger and marketing in your targeted referral areas gives you the benefit of having a global team and saying, hey, I don't care where you are, I've got it. So when a buyer picks up the phone and says, hey, I'm looking to buy something and I'm coming from California, but I have a house to sell. In their mind, like I could go interview an agent and just, hey, don't worry about it. If you wanna buy here, I'm gonna hook you up with somebody that I work with personally. We're gonna take a team approach to this. They're gonna keep me informed of your listing or when you sell, I'm gonna be able to take that information and help us for our buy and really create a team atmosphere. Um, Jet. Yes. If anybody wants to go more in depth in the Facebook ads, I'm, teach, I'm teaching on Education Day in two weeks. So awesome. we'll go more into this. Yes. Yes. 
Very good, very good. So this is Facebook ads? These are through social command. media ads through command. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. And again, they're internet leads, right? So it's not like, oh, I got 60 or 98, which means I have 98 closings this month. No, <coughs> now I've captured that information. Even if, you know, 50% of it's junk, I've got 40 people I can add to my database. And growing your database is key. So Jay, out of those buyer leads generated, 98, were, are they clicks? Like what's, what's a lead? No, so when you go through command, and again, the gentleman over here, I'm sorry, Matt. Matt. He's our tech guy. When, when he'll probably go into it in depth. Um, but basically, there's a page, kind of just like you know, a forced registration. You say, ooh, I like these pictures. So those are the people that actually engage in it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. And, and with command, and again, in full transparency, I don't use command A to the capacity that I should, and B, I'm transitioning out into a different CRM. But with command, the way that they run the Facebook and social media ads is really cool because they look at us as one account. So if you're running it through your business page and you're doing it, you know, the business suite in Facebook, they're looking at you as Brooke. Brooke is spending thirty dollars a day. We're going to put her stuff here, and maybe it'll be in front of this person. But when we have our partnership as uh, Keller Williams with Facebook and Google, we're one of the only real estate companies that have those explicit relationships, uh, and we say, hey, it's not Brooke spending thirty dollars; it's this command account where across the country they're spending forty thousand dollars a day. You're going to get better ad placement and more engagement, and that's why our cost per lead is low. Matt, what's the date you're reaching? Out? What was oh, yesterday's date? Today's yesterday. Twenty fifth. Yeah. Eleven a.m. I think. Okay. So this, uh, I forget who asked about this. I think someone asked about it. Um, targeting agents and leadership. So when you're lead generating and you either knock on a door or you pick up the phone, you're talking to one person who potentially is looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Potentially. So that's that's cool. If they if they are great. If not. That conversation's over, and we put them on a drip campaign. We talk to them later. <clears throat> However, when you talk to an agent outside of your market, you and if you think about it this way, you're reaching into their database. If I've got a really, really close friend in a particular area, uh, and I'm just going to use for here, let's just say that everyone is coming from Chester County, even though it's like right next door, and we probably sell them there anyway. It will be something different. Let's say Pittsburgh. So if you know that there's tons of business coming from Pittsburgh to Delaware County, and you align with some really good agents in Pittsburgh, well now you, you've got the relationship. Me and Brooke, we talk all the time, we mastermind, we have conversations, and she has a thousand people in her database in, in Pittsburgh, which means that if any time one of those 1,000 people is looking to move to Delaware County, they're gonna call Brooke. So Brooke has a database she doesn't even know about from the relationships that she has with other people. So you can see the agent talks to the agent who's got the three people. Take it a step farther or further, not mentioned. Agent to a leader or somebody that is more, I don't want to say recognizable, but comes in contact with people more. So as an example, Anne Marie and I are friends. Anne Marie knows I do a good business. And now anytime any one of you go to her and say, hey, I need somebody from Myrtle Beach, and Marie's going to refer to me. So now, not only am I you know, saying, hey, look, you're my friend, we talk, we communicate, but now all of your agents, and how many agents do you have? I'm 220. So I can potentially connect with 220 people who, what's that? And growing. Um, and growing, growing. Oh, thank you, yes. Um, so let's just say everybody has 1,000 people in their database, which means that I could potentially be in front of 220,000 people that I have never spoken to in my life but have the opportunity to help them serve their business and grow my business because of my relationships with the leaders and other market centers. How often do you talk to these other agents? We'll get into that later. Um, and again, it, it is almost like a part-time job. It's, it's my lead generation, right? So it's phone calls, it's, hey, how's your business this year? Hey, here's a card, here's a gift, here's, uh, let me talk to you about it. I'll get on and mastermind with people once a month. Um, I've got an agent friend down in, what's that place called? It's Baton Rouge. She's like down in the Baton Rouge area. And she, I forget why, I think I saw on Facebook she was struggling with something. So I said, hey, you said you want accountability. How do I call you, you know, 
every Friday for the next month and just see how that works out. So we got on a call and I was like, hey, what's going on? And they want to hear it from you? Yes. <laughs> like, I feel like I'd be like, um, why, what do you want? Why are you calling? <laughs> well, yeah, you. That's because we're fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, he put it, but no, if somebody put out that they're struggling, then I think they would want to hear from yeah. you. Because right. like, if somebody puts that out there, I feel like they're saying, hey, yeah. I'm struggling health. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but, but then am just, I really going to send them a referral if I have one? Why like, wouldn't you, right? You're, like, you're building a if you, relationship. If you, if you, if you, if you, well, I think what a struggle is. I mean, I think we're talking about a hypothetical <laughs> I mean, struggle. Yeah. If somebody could be like, hey, I close 100 deals a year, and for some reason, the past five of mine just fell apart. I'm having a bad day. Right. Well, it doesn't mean they're a bad agent, right. you yeah. know? Yeah, but like, I'm on that KW, KW Mastermind group, and a lot of times it's like, Help! I've been in the business for three years and haven't had any deals yet. Like, what can I do? Uh, well, like, well, something's wrong there. Yeah. Absolutely. And and let, let's clarify this as well, Brooke. I'm not just like, oh, this random person has a problem. <coughs> I want to solve it. It's somebody that I know and have built a relationship with previously. I'm like, hey, we run a similar business. Let's talk. And again, it's not like let me be your coach, but it's let me be your friend in this business. You're also great at giving shout outs. Like, I've seen you give shout outs to Phyllis. I think you've given a shout out to our media office and me. Yeah. Like, so he's great with that stuff, too. The other thing with leaders, just don't, <laughs> don't think of like a team leader. Think of a rainmaker. Like, so a rainmaker of a team, they've got, you know, people underneath of them. So that's a great relationship mm -hmm. with the rainmaker. Of productivity team. coaches, even better. Um, there's a productivity coach in Charlotte who calls me all the time. I'll say, hey, I got another one. One of the people in my program needs somebody. And I've closed deals out of that probably three or four in the past two years from a, one particular productivity coach. There's one market center in North Carolina, and, and it wasn't last year's number, but 2021, I closed nine referrals out of one market center. So, of course, I'm sending the entire market center, we'll talk about this. Christmas time, they get like a big box of snacks and stuff with a note from me, <coughs> and it sits at the front desk. So even agents who don't know me are like, oh, that's so cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that guy. And then you talk about shout outs. Then people are like, hey, shout out to this guy for doing that. Hey, shout out to Jay for sending this stuff. And now other people's students are being flooded. Like, well, I want snacks. I'm gonna send Jay a referral. I have a quick question. Yes. So I'm here on this app, and I I've lived in a couple places, and I want to try to tap into this referral. Um, and I'm looking here, like my best friend lives in Cleveland. She's got my family there. And there's like agents here. How do you pick from this referral list? So that is, and you're on the command website? Yeah, I'm on the So thing. that's the challenge. I, I haven't been there in a while, so I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, just making things up. I believe you can filter and say, like, this much production or yeah, this many units. Yeah, closed units, first name, maybe Z, which, what? Yeah. Uh, listing sold by size. <laughs> it's also just, like, you know, overwhelming. It's a lot. It is. Like, it's and not, like, that's why I prefer hearing from people who've done business with other people and putting it on social media like, hey, who knows Philly? Oh, and I've got, and again, I know that you guys kind of bleed over territory, mm -hmm. but again, and it's a lot of work. So find a system that works, by the way, like create a spreadsheet, Some, create your yeah. CRM, and we'll talk about it. But like, I'm like, okay, Philly, well, where in Philly? Okay, it's, it's you know, in West Philly. Okay, somebody from Delco can help. Oh, it's in the Northeast? Okay, then I've got somebody in Bucks that I work with. Like, that's a lot of stuff, but when people ask, I've actually done business with these people, so it's like, okay, I trust what he says because he's done business with them before versus looking at a screen. So I do think it's more personal. That's a good starting point because you can say, hey, let me pick the top three or four people and give them a call and let them know that I'm interviewing for a referral opportunity and I want to get to know them and their business. And that's what I was going to say. You could Google the top Yeah, like people. guarantee you're not going to hear back from at least one of them, so that takes them off the list, yep. you know, and, and then like, you can kind of narrow it down. I'm just thinking, like, one of the girl's name is Inna. I'm like, oh, that's a cool name. Like, just ba picking based on, like, the yeah. name. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, so if you're sending a referral and getting a referral fee, that's kind of your name, too. So you want to interview them and make sure that you're sending this person to exactly. a person. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't right. get these calls a lot, but once, I, I get maybe three or four a year, but some <laughs> agent will just call the team leader directly and say, hey, I have a referral. I'm looking for an ALC member or somebody yeah. who's taking bold or somebody who's this. I'll say, so I'll say, well, what exact area are you looking for? Both are you, you know, a what age group if they're looking for a senior specialist? Like, so then I can, tap, you know, give them to somebody in the office. Exactly. So I know for like Pat Gilday one time, I had somebody call 
from that KW office, and they had a doctor, and Pat's worked with several doctors, and so I was like, you know what, and it was Wallingford, and Pat's worked in Wallingford. So I was like, oh, you know what, I got the perfect agent for you, yeah. and I hooked them up with Pat Gildad, and then yeah. Pat Gildad paid them a referral fee. So I don't get a lot of them, but you can do that. You can call the team leader and say, this is what I'm looking for. The team leader knows the agents in the office, you know? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and that, now you say, hey, well, it was great talking with you. If you have anybody in Delaware County, I'd love for you to remember me, follow up. We'll talk about that in a second, too. Uh, but to add on to what Amber Lee said, I actually had uh, a referral person call me and say, hey, I heard I should call you, but my client wants a female, an older female. Heard it, heard it. And I said, well, that's not me. But I have somebody that you know on the ALC that I would change mind that I'll refer to. You. And she said, Well, how old is she? I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna give you a referral. I'm guessing agents. Come on. Uh, so your KW Connect bio and within the white pages and this populates everywhere. I can't tell you how many times by me just having this personalized has gotten me referrals. And I'll say, hey. How did you come to me? And they'll say, I looked you up in command, and your bio was the only bio I saw that wasn't the generic Teacher. one they give you when you log into K when you first log into KW. I guarantee you, if you have not done this and created your own, you all have the same one. Mm -hmm. it, it's I forget exactly how it, buyers are my passion and I love finding green homes and whatever. <laughs> Mine just says, uh, again, I'm not gonna kind of probably do that, yes. Uh, it says, Jay Gray is a transplant from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, with over eight years of real estate experience. He started his career in Pennsylvania as a dual career agent. In addition to being a realtor, Jay was a firefighter for more than a decade. After deciding that real estate in South Carolina was the best direction for his business, he made the move to the beach. Since then, Jay has operated as an individual agent, oversaw the operations of a successful real estate team, and held leadership roles of productivity coach and assistant team leader in the Keller Williams Myrtle Beach Market Center. Jay has a proven track record of doing what's right and making sure every deal is a win-win. Yeah, something stupid and simple, and people are like, you care enough to change it, you're my yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 100%. They, yes. And to I answer like our question earlier, it says down here, years with KW6, this is from last year, so we are going into our eighth year this year. Oh, Jay, do, do you ever no, use no, no, your no. Um, firefighter role to appeal for referrals? Occasionally. And I think it's bigger <laughs> than just having formally been a fireman. I think for anybody, it's what's one thing about you that's different that other people might connect with. You know, if, if you love dogs, land. like you're obsessed with dogs, another agent's like, oh my God, I love dogs too. <laughs> and it, it's the that's weird kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if, like there's a girl, uh, she is outside of Columbia, South Carolina. She got into real estate two years ago. Her name's Tally Hunt, and she just started she has a goal of closing 100 units this year. She closed 80 last year in her second year of real estate as an individual agent. And her thing is like, hey, I'm a military mom. I'm a, you know, a business mommy. I have business mommy Facebook groups. And other, she teaches a class where people sign up like, hey, I'm a mom who's also a real estate agent. I wanna join this class. And she then captures an audience of 40 people and is like, hey, now you're going to send me business, right? And how many people do I have? Okay, so I've got like 20 people held captive in here to telling my story to, like, hey, when you've got something in Myrtle Beach, let me know. Does that answer your question like, a little bit? Yeah. yeah. I feel like you should be like putting out your real estate buyers. Like, it's gonna get a little <laughs> That's so long ago. That. That's cheesy, though. Then people he won't has, use me. And he has no fires. Everything just goes so smoothly, the, right? Well, yes. <laughs> Refer him to me so you don't have any fires. <laughs> Gary yeah. Keller said if you're good at putting out fires, you're probably good at starting. Right? <laughs> I, I think he said that. If not, we all just like, yeah, that's something you would yeah, probably stress. Actually, you know, that's why I stayed on the email like, inside. Fix your problems <laughs> and always have problems. Yeah. Exactly. It's so true. Listen to the broker. So, regional <laughs> and national events, uh, I'm sure that your region has like a training calendar, right? The greater PA region has a training calendar. Yeah. If it's if you don't know what it is or you don't have it, ask somebody in leadership and they can get that for you. We put it on our calendar, like we put their training on our calendar as well, so. Gotcha. Yeah. It was, a lot of people don't really, like that's one thing I hear in my market center, is people will say like, well hey, I, I didn't know that career visioning was there. What is career visioning? Um, having that, let me myself. 
there's a little bit of craziness that just happened. <laughs> um, having that calendar is super effective because if you don't know what you don't know, so you don't know what you're missing. And these events are local, so you're going to connect with people locally that are you know, your potential referral partners. Uh, we got Kingdom Development Union, Mega Camp, industry events, whether it's your local board events like that. Again, sounds weird, right? Like, well, why am I going to go to my local board and, and network with these people? How am I going to get referrals out of it? So I've gone to like local just networking events and met. I have like a few compass agents that refer me deals in Delaware because yeah. I'm licensed in the state of Delaware. Like, it doesn't just have to be KW agents exactly. either. And it can be, it's, I mean, we're 10 minutes from Delaware, but if they're not licensed and we kind of get a good thing going, like, they'll refer me their business there. Absolutely. Like, you guys have triple play, that's what it's called, right, down in Lamb <laughs> City. Just don't get in a fight. Um, <laughs> but going there, now you're connecting with agents in Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey. Connect with those people. Show your value. Be you. Don't be, like, fake or anything either. Just be you and engage people. Unless you're a humble person that just maybe don't be yourself. Um, but really, just being engaging in these areas is going to help out. Any aha, it's perfect timing because like everyone wants to say something. So, <laughs> you know, realtors, you can't keep them quiet. For I know. I'm, I'm like, oh my god, am I getting bored? I was in an area we can't keep them mad. They just can't keep quiet. Uh, okay. We had we had a previously scheduled meeting, so we have to roll. But uh, okay. thank you so much. This was great. Yeah, absolutely. Make a video. I always try. I will say no. This was. Um, Great information. I oh, We're done, by the way. You guys are done. No, I know. I know. I know. Maybe up, 12 you know. o'clock. Gotcha. I feel like um, I sometimes limit, like, because um, I mean, I know I want to say you're around my age. Because I think when back when I worked at the front, you told me I was like blown away. You might be younger than me. I always think, like, oh, I have people that like aren't even buying houses in Delco. Like, they're definitely not going to be buying houses in the Carolinas or the Jersey Shores, you know, stuff right. like that. So I feel like sometimes like the limiting beliefs of I can't do that. But it's always something I'm like, I want to. You know, I want to send those referrals and I want to do it because it is so much opportunity. So I appreciate the tips. Absolutely. Yeah, I just think it's very impressive that you not only network and do all that kind of stuff, but you have sold 18 million in just four years of being down there with only an assistant. Thank you. So yeah, I think that's really impressive. And that, that my assistant just came on in March of this past year, so he yeah. hasn't been moving for a year yet. And he sucks. Uh, <laughs> 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 really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna get a new one or no? No, it's my brother. Uh, it's my brother. <laughs> I saw you down there. Yeah. 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 So my house. Sometimes with family, that yeah, it can be tough. But, Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. Any other ahas? Okay. I like when you said like in the network pages on Facebook, like just participate in conversation because if somebody searches your name, even those participation comments are gonna come up and make it look like you're a caring you're person on there a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's, that's good. Awesome. On the way up. Let's see. Winning, ooh, this is the fun stuff, okay? I, I was told you all the boring stuff, but this is how you compete against other agents for the business. So this is exciting for me. So when you hear someone's looking for a referral in your market, make sure that you're speeding to the lead. Call the referring agent, send a text, <coughs> social media connection, identify mutual colleagues. Hey, I saw that we were friends with Anne Marie. I love Anne Marie. Uh, you must be an awesome person. Let's connect and have a conversation. I created, this is from last year or the year before, I forget, but this is a little graphic that I created that when somebody says, hey, I need somebody in the Myrtle Beach market, instead of like, here's my resume, here's who I am, oh my God, I just send that out. And I'm like, hey, this is a little bit about me. When's a good time to connect? And again, using a presumptive close to say, when are we connecting? Then we're like, uh, how about four o'clock? Sounds good, perfect. Just like a listing appointment, and you say, is today at three or tomorrow at 10 better for you? Having those same kind of conversations with these people saying, hey, here's my value, here's who I am, when are we gonna connect? And where it says call, send a text, social media, blah, 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 do all three. I know it sounds annoying, but I'll get Facebook messages, and if I don't know you, it goes in the request folder. So I might say, hey, I have a referral from New York City, and somebody tries to message me. If we're not friends, I might not see it. So guess what? We're real estate agents. Google my name and the city I'm from, and you'll find my phone number. Shoot a text to that person. It'll stand out more than just a comment on Facebook as well. Now you've connected. Now how do you win the referral? Again, this is just like a listing appointment. 
you want to make sure that, oh, I wrote that down already. <laughs> it's just like a listing appointment. Ask questions about the client, about the agent. Don't just say, oh, hey, yeah, sounds good. I'll take the referral. Mm -hmm. Two things. One, you want to be sure that you're connecting with the agent and showing that you care and value their client. And you might not want every referral. I've had people like, hey, I'm going to send you a referral. Stop. What is it? Well, it's an FHA for, they're approved up to 75,000 and they're looking in this neighborhood where everything's a million bucks. And it's like, sorry, I'm probably not the best fit, but I've got somebody who might be good and that could help you. And then you give them to an agent in your office who might be you know, just starting out or something like that, that will take that business. That has the time. Exactly. Like that, yeah. um, so make sure you're asking questions about the client. Convey that you are the market expert. You know, they're, they're calling people in your office most likely. They're going to call Brooke and they're going to call, well, I went in here with on the same team. Um, they're going to call multiple people from your office. And you can't say, well, you know, KW Media is the best because, well, yeah. And I'm also talking to somebody else in KW Media. Why are you the right person to send this referral to? Make sure that you know your numbers. This is one thing that I have found that really helped my business and really helped my referral business. Uh, I got a MAPS coach in February of last year when I was at family reunion. And I don't always do everything that we say we're gonna do, but the one thing that I do is know my numbers. And when you're having a conversation with an agent, and I treat every agent as if they're a top producer. And many times they're not. Sometimes you're gonna get a, an agent referral and you're like, oh my God, this is this person's first ever interaction with somebody. And it's, it's challenging. And it's an opportunity to A, be a role model for them, and B, be able to rattle off numbers. And if they are a top producer, they're like, wow, this guy thinks like me. If they're not a top producer, they're like, wow, I'm not doing my business right. Um, so knowing your numbers, have your elevator pitch slash script ready. Um, never speak negatively about others. That's something that I've heard where people are like, oh, you know what? I was gonna give it to this guy, but he was just bashing X, Y, Z. You actually said that that guy's a good guy. And you, you know, I get people in my office and I'll say, hey, I know that you're probably looking to talk to me and Chris Farrell, because Chris Farrell is an agent in my office who does a ton of referral business as well. I said, hey, you're probably gonna interview Chris and you're gonna interview me. And no matter who you select, your client's gonna be in great hands because Chris is awesome, I'm awesome. It just comes down to the fit of the personality. So good luck to you. And they're like, oh, Okay, well, it's gonna be you now because you're a nice person. Um, if they reached out to you first, ask them how they identified you and who to thank. Because they may have gotten your name from somebody else who is in your referral sphere. Um, or they may have found you in command or they may have found you because of your bio and they're letting you know what's working. So A, it helps me in my business when I know that my bio being non-generic gets me business, and then I can also share that with you. So there's like huge value in knowing where the business comes from. And your elevator pitch script doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's just like a little bit about you. And typically what I'll do is somebody goes, hey, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And I'll say, if it's okay with you, I can start with when I moved here five years ago. And they'll say, yeah, that's fine. I said, hey, moved here, no family, no friends, no sphere, built my business from the ground up, I've been in leadership positions, I don't want to give you my entire resume or be one of those number guys, but if you want them, I've got them. And they'll say, yeah, sure, what did you do? And I say, well, I closed 48 deals last year, 60% were buyers, <coughs> listings, 75% of those were referrals, 17 and a half, blah, 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 $18 million. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay, you know what you're doing, you can rattle them off, you're good to go. So have that little elevator pitch ready and just keep it the same. <coughs> And so, Jay, before you got so busy, would you use the office numbers if you had to use numbers? Or you just didn't uh, use the numbers? I just, I just leave them out. Okay. But, but no, I didn't. Because we have some newer agents, so I, you know, they, they don't have those assistants. And I, I love that about us, uh, about Keller Williams, is we are a team and together we achieve more. So when you say, like, hey, it's my first year, I don't have any business to say that I closed 30, 40 deals, 50 deals. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, we, my office, mm -hmm. you know, I I have the best leadership team in the area, and you know, they're here to support me. I have a question. I've got some of the top producing agents in the county with me. We are going to take care of you. Yeah, I love you know. It. Okay, good. 
Okay, now you've won the opportunity. They say, hey, look, you're the guy, you're the girl. Be sure to set up an introduction game plan for a referring agent. This is probably one of the most challenging parts. Somebody says, hey, you're the guy. I'm going to give Miss Carol your number. No, because you've now lost control of that potential lead. Now, Miss Carol has your phone number and she lost it in her purse and she never calls you. And then you're going to bother this agent like, hey, I never heard from Carol. Oh, well, let me get in touch with her. Set the expectation. Control the conversation. Say, hey, look, what I found in my business when it comes to referrals, the best way to make sure that everyone's on the same page and that your client is being handled properly, could you set a joint introduction, whether it's through email or text, that's great. Shoot that over and then I'll respond and we'll set up a time for us to talk privately. And they're like, oh, that's a good idea. The benefit of this is, again, now you're capturing their contact information, whether it's their email or their phone number, whether it's a text or an email. So you're being introduced and it also gives you the control of when you're going to call that person. So for me, I, I, I'll get a referral and they'll say, she wants you to call her today. And if that's fine if, if I have the time, but sometimes it's like, well, hey, it's six o'clock and I'm in the middle of something. Just because I picked up the phone to talk about your referral doesn't mean I can call your client. Send an email intro, you acknowledge it, and say, hey, it's great to meet you. When's a good time for us to chat tomorrow between 10 and two? and then you get a response. You've now set that appointment to talk with that potential lead. Make sure that you have the referral terms. Now, within command, Keller Williams agents who send other Keller Williams agents business do have the ability to track their referrals in command. You can put update notes in there. You can agree to the fee that you're gonna be paying in there. That's all great. Out of my referrals, probably, 5% are actually put through command, um, and we end up doing a PDF slash DocuSign of uh, refer paper referral agreement anyway. Uh, but you want to make sure that you have the information and that all the expectations are met. When somebody says, hey, I want to charge 35% for this buyer who's approved for $100,000, make a business decision. Does that make sense to you? And if it doesn't, push back. Because I think sometimes agents will be like, hey, let me see if I can get 35%. But they're okay with 25, they're just gonna push for 35. And if you say, okay, yeah, I'll take it, they're like, eh, you got 10% more on my referral for doing nothing. So I've been presented with people who say, hey, 30%, I'll say, hey, my standard's 25%. Why should we do 30%? They go, uh. I actually had a guy say, I've been working with these buyers for two years. I said, okay. So I'm going to charge 30% because I put so much work into them. And I said, hey, from my perspective, you have to be able to sell them a home in two years. Should I pay 30% for a referral that might not close for another two years potentially and I have to run around and go, hey, man, good point, good point, 25% is fine. Now, really, it's only 5%. Am I going to, like, hey, never mind. You guys want to send me a referral. I don't want to do it for 30%. <laughs> point being, make a decision. 35, go for 35. <laughs> Fun fact cost of sale, which the way our model is, is supposed to be under 30%. So if you get a referral of 25%, you're already ahead of the game. And with me, with my business being predominantly referrals, I've spent a lot more money last year on other things, but my profit margins are a lot higher because I'm not spending a ton on ad campaigns. I'm not doing this massive amount of work and you know, what's my ROI? My ROI is, hey, nice to meet you. Thank you for a commission. I didn't cost me anything. Yeah, um, I think 25 is a good one. Make sure that you are requesting their market center or brokerage W9. That way they can get paid on the referral expeditiously. Um, if you don't know that you need to ask for their W9 and they don't know to give it to you and you don't have it, then your MCA is going to be like, hey, Laura's like, hey, I need this. It's going to delay their payment. And they're like, oh my God, this closed two weeks ago. The buyer <laughs> called me and told me and I still haven't gotten paid. I'm not sending broker referral again. So make sure that you've got the, all the terms of the agreement, even if it's in a text, and say, hey, put it on paper later. Just get those terms so there's no surprises. Again, setting the expectation. Um, is it going to be a joint effort? Are they selling there and buying here? Are we going to need to know each other's dates? Um, this is one thing that I've done really well, uh, and it actually, has become a value proposition for my clients as well. 
when I go on to a listing appointment and I'm like, hey, by the way, I know the top agent in here, 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 and here. That's where I'm going to be marketing my things, my network of people. I can get this done for you. And I've had situations, and I'll use a particular one. Back when there was all the craziness going on, when interest rates were 225 percent, and it was so. I mean, I don't know what's here, so I, I try not to make presumptions on other markets. But in our market, things were going over asking. You know, multiple offers, waiving appraisals, um, using escalation clauses, things like that. Um, we weren't as crazy as some other areas, like Charlotte. Uh, they were using their earnest money, their due diligence money, it was like 50 grand, and you lose it if you don't close for any reason, any reason at all. We weren't that wild, but it was challenging to get buyers under contract, particularly when they had <laughs> homes to sell. A home sale contingency was like, no way. So I had a client that was referred to me by an agent in Atlanta. She was moving to our market, and I said, hey, look, this is going to be a challenge. We've got to do this together. So. I'm going to write the offer contingent upon the home that you're listing. And she didn't have it listed yet because she didn't want to list it and then be homeless when it sold in four hours. So I said, look, let's see if we can get the purchase under contract contingent on you putting it in the MLS on Friday. And I'm going to have you talk to the listing agent here and tell them what's going on in your market, your expertise, and that we know that we're going to get my buyer's home sold in Atlanta so they can purchase their home in South Carolina. And every time I've done it, probably done it about four or five times where I've looped the other agent in and we're working together because now your home sale, that date has to line up with my date. We have to make sure that we're getting the money transferred from your closing to this closing. Having that teamwork, and when you tell a client like, hey, I've done this before and this is what I'll do for you, they're like, oh my gosh. Like I thought I was gonna have to find my own agent down in Florida. But you got it, and I don't have to do anything. You're not going to charge me for this additional service? Oh, no. No, I'm going to charge you to sell your home, but they're not going to charge you when you purchase your home. You know, again, well, I'm not going to get into that, but potentially they're looking at this as a huge value. Uh, make sure that you're communicating a timeline to them. What I like to do is ask people how involved they want to be up front. Say, hey, do you want to know everything that happens, or do you just want to know when it closes? Usually what I'll do is, hey, we found a house, we're going to write the contract. Hey, we wrote the contract, we wrote the contract, we had to get through inspections and everything, closing date scheduled for February 5th, and then once it closes, hey, just so you know, we closed in the deal, thank you so much, your check will be out, it's going to be processed in the next day or two. There we got that. Yeah, there's still no game. Connecting with and serving the client. Notifying the <laughs> referral partner of your client's success. Uh, this is, did I skip something? Oh, connect, uh, that was like blank, you've done your job, now we're done. Uh, complete the transaction, notifying the referral uh, partner that your client has successfully closed. This is something that a lot of people don't do. I like, I, I've gotten in the past two months a ton of business from Google and Google local services, not sure if anyone's using that right now. It's like a verified Google business page where they push you more than other people and I think you get charged when you actually make the connection. It's like 60 bucks a call or something like that. Literally the first time I got a call, it was a listing, and we put it on our contract in like two days. So for $60, I made $9,000. So Google lo Local Services, look into it, and the more reviews you have, the more trustworthy you are. And my opinion is, I don't want just clients to tell me I'm doing a good job. I want the agents who referred me to tell me I'm doing a good job for two reasons. One, if uh, consumers are looking and they're like, oh wow, this guy or girl is doing really well, professionals are endorsing him, clients are endorsing him or her, and simultaneously, I'll get calls through that Google local services and say, hey, I'm an agent in Tennessee. It's scary how many agents just Google Myrtle Beach agent. And I'm like, and you just call it the first one? Yeah, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but having those reviews really helps. So have your referral partners write a review and say, hey, if I did a good job for our client, would you be open to writing a review for me? <coughs> sure. Perfect. Here's the link. Um, Jason, do you have a question? Google Forms, is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. So 
requesting a review, I, I personally have gotten Google Forms out, but what I've done is sent kind of like a, um, an assessment to my referral partner, and it's a Google Form, and it was like, hey, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate my communication? On a scale of one to 10, how would you rate you know, your client's response to how I handled them? Just to collect data and so that I could share that with people initially. I'd say, hey look, I've got this whole Google sheet of agents who said X, Y, and Z about me, and I would just send that out to my referral partners. Like, hey, I'm interviewing for the job, here's what other people are saying. That's a little bulky now. Facebook and Google is probably the easiest thing. Um, and then sending a thank you note or gift addresses to them at their market center. That way people are like, oh, this came you know, for Brooke. Who's it from? Oh, it's from this, you know, why is she getting stuff? I want to get stuff, cool. Then send referrals to that person. Okay, maintaining a relationship for continued referrals. You have yet to create raving fans. This, I think, Brooke, you had asked about this a little bit earlier about like, are you lead genning to agents and how are we communicating? Um, add your referral partners to your CRM whatever that CRM may be, whether it's Command, Boomtown, Brivity, whatever you're using, or you're just using a spreadsheet in Google uh, Sheets, you know, put them in there. Tag them as agent partners. That way when you're doing your touch campaigns or you're sending out your birthday cards or whatever you're doing, you're also including the agents that you've done business with and staying top of mind. Um, make sure you stay connected on social media, celebrating their successes. That's one of my favorite things to do is when I see somebody who is an agent, whether they're in my market or not, whether they're with Keller Williams or not, and they're crushing it, tell them they're crushing it for two things. One, people are like, wow, that person cares about everyone else's business, not just their own. And again, profit sharing thing. We have a, a local brokerage, mom and pop place that came up last year, they got like 40 agents, and they're doing really, really well. But I don't think that they get the support that they need from their leadership. So I'm always on there like, hey, you're doing amazing. And I'm like, oh my God, people in my own office don't tell me that. Perfect <coughs> opportunity for uh, growing crop share. Do you, how do you tell them that? Like on a private message? No, no. You make right out in public. I'm like, you're doing awesome. Because people are, they're one of two things. You're gonna say, that person's a good person and they're, you know, they care. Or they're gonna be like, why is that person being nice? Well, just nice, sorry. You know, like if that's your mindset, I'm going to tell you. I don't but, ever get these calls. What the hell? What? For me? You're not so nice, me. Well, hey, you can talk about that before. <laughs> uh, although I did call you and tell you that they went with somebody else. You did. Okay. We're not going to get into that. It wasn't my fault. Or Brooks, for that matter. Um, celebrate their successes. Doing one-on-one -on -one calls or Zooms with masterminds, either on an individual basis or as a group of people. Um, so again, this kind of goes back to, I have in my database my referral partners, and I will DTD to them. We all know what DTD to is, right? Old graduates, <coughs> come on, do the database too. So check out DTD to, first of all, sign up for bold when it comes. Also, by the way, I'm not a bold coach, I'm not a mass coach, I'm not selling anything from Keller Williams. I'm on my soapbox because it changed my life, it'll change your life. Go to bold. I know people are like, oh, it's stupid, I don't get it. It's rah, rah, rah. It's not anymore. It's different. It's better. Shorter. Uh, I don't know when the last time you had it, but it's like six hours instead of eight hours now. Um, but what DTD2 is, it breaks down the alphabet. Um, there's a mathematical equation behind it. It says, hey, this week call A and W. This week call B and D. And that's names, you know, Bradley, <coughs> Dawson, whatever. Have your agents set up on something similar. Like, hey, I'm gonna call all my agent partners or friends that I know that are agents that begin with A and F. And you make those calls that day. Hey, what's up, how's business? Just wanna check in with you, blah, blah, blah. Perfect, 30 seconds, whatever it is. Or, fun thing with bold. Say, hey, I'm gonna do a bold 100 today. I wanna to talk to 100 agents, blast it out there. Who wants a call from me? Preferably people outside of my market. And now you get like, hey, I'll help out, I'll help out, because people want to help. You put that in the bold group, you'll be talking to 100 agents like that. So um, support them when an agent is looking for a referral in their market. So as an, again, only if it really was a good experience. Don't be referring people and it's crappy and you're like, oh, I owe that person. But if you work a referral together, 
and that person killed it, and you would trust that person to your friends or family, when someone else is looking in that market, say, hey, I worked with Phyllis, you know, we closed the deal together last year, she was awesome, you're gonna love, love her. Uh, oh, I did write TC into your book. <laughs> I must have memorized this, I can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I told you to be about an hour and a half. Yeah. We are about an hour and 20 minutes, so, any final ahas, and definitely open to conversation where this is not, you know, hey, we have to be done now. Would love to talk more. Oh. I want to get a picture of everybody with yeah. Jay. Before also, take your phone out. Scan that. This is another cool thing. Mm -hmm. I hope it works. It was like gigantic. So I would recommend getting something like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be Popple. The reason I like Popple is two things. You can get a Carl Gino. Yeah, so basically what Popple is is like I know they've got like Instacard, they've got like some other stuff. Popple's cool because it also um, has a physical piece to it as well. Um, you can get a, like I have a wristband and you can like bump somebody's phone. Sweet. Here, yeah. Good job, Carl. He's so smart. So smart, our group. Did it work? Thanks. So are you trying to collect all of our information? Absolutely. That works, Carl. I'm scared now that I can't see what's going on. <laughs> um, so what's really cool with Popple is, again, I, I don't get like paid for them either, but what I like about them is I have a, a bracelet that I can like bump your phone and all of my contact information will be put in your phone and I'll get yours. Wait, what? Yeah. And they also have they have this like for shop. Well, no, you have to like you allow it. Like, and you have to like really like. Yeah. You can't just really walk up well. to someone and like scan their phone. Right. Just sent me. Just sent me. Uh, I was just say my phone is. Oh, yeah, so wait, look what you got from. Did you see? Go check your app and see what you got. And it's super cool because I'll use that. There's also like a link where I can just like share that link. So when I'm connecting with agents, I'm like, hey. It's Joe Gray with Keller Williams in Myrtle Beach. I'd love to connect. I see that you had a referral need here. Here's my bio and contact information. And then when I send that out, it gives them my bio, a little bit about me. Max, you didn't get it. I, I, I got it now. Okay. I was going to say, uh, I touched the light button. So, Sorry. and again, this is just like icing on the cake. I use them. There's other things out there. Like I said, I use the bracelet. They also have it where it's like a credit card and you just tap the credit card. Um, you can also like put that on your phone, especially for, I know family reunion, you've got your barcode on your thing and the, you know, the app never works. Save that to your home screen. Hey, I would love to connect with you. And then boop, people just scan it and you're good to go. And it collects their information. So for like 70 bucks a year. Can I take my grandkids off my home screen and put this on it? Yeah. All right. Um, I like how, I, I think that's so cool that I just got all your information. Isn't that neat? So, I think awesome. Got, and you and just you got, got all yours. Hey, so, huh? you know what? Now that I think about it, if anyone is going to get a pop let me know because I think they give me a credit. So. I was going to say, okay, I, I, I will. Yeah, you do. Oh, and she got one back there? Technology is amazing. And hers is just a keychain. Hey, look at you. Not cool that. Mine's the keychain, but I also have a widget on my phone, like what you're talking about. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And they make a thing for the back. Tanisha, you're holding it on. I love it. I would go to popple.com because you want to. Wait, are you talking about? Yeah, it popped up and it's asking if I want to create an account, but how do we put you in there to get the credit? Oh, I don't know yet. If it came from Jay's link, it might. I think it might connect all of my maybe. Either way, super cool. Try it out today. Check out their website because they've got all kinds of different ways to like physically collect things. Like Any questions, thoughts, final aha? Uh -huh. I admire your hustle. I think it's so cool. I feel like you figured it out. Like you learned how to be the best you can be at what you do, and I think it's just absolutely incredible. Well, I really appreciate that. I love positive words, and like I'm a, I love attention, talking in front of people. But <laughs> no, no, but truly, I'm not like, and that, that's the thing. It's like. I realized that my business was so heavy and dependent on referrals that I wasn't in control of my business. And I was like, I well, what happens if people stop sending me referrals? I'm not making phone calls. I'm not doing the right that things to my sphere. Better. Like, what, what happens? <laughs> so I intentionally um, lowered the percentage while increasing the numbers of referrals because my past clients and everything kind of filled that out. And now I'm doing better, but like, 
what blows my mind is I did everything I'm supposed to do and everything that Keller Williams teaches and I time block and I did everything I'm supposed to do. I probably had 100 closings for last year. I look at my lost opportunity and why did I lose those potential opportunities and it's, there's situations where it's my fault. And what blows my mind is like, wow, if I did this the right way, I could really crush it. So if referrals are not part of your business at all or a fraction of your business and you turn that on, you could probably increase your business by like 20, 25%. That's interesting. And Haley, I don't mean to embarrass Jay, but I have to tell everybody this story because Brooke and I laugh about it to this day. I know this a lot. When we worked at an X, another company, an XYZ company, we walked into this, our building was very old where our office was, and we walked into this one office, which Brooke says was really the bathroom. It wasn't that tough, right? Yeah, <laughs> and we found Jay, and I would go in there every day, yeah. and Jay would be in there, I'm like, what is he doing? My mom would come on stage, and she'd he be would like, be like, what is he doing? I'm like, I feel, I feel so, so sorry for him. him. He's like, Doing the paper, like he would be doing anything to like lead Jen or whatever. Like he's just always been so hungry. Yeah. And I mean, here's this thing. He's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to figure it out. Just playing on the yeah, computer. It's I don't know. It's just yeah, 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 but like you just, you just always yeah. did it, and you just, you have the hustle, you have yeah, the drive. So and cool. He bought a house, so he's, he's got. Down. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. truly, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. remarkable yeah. and commendable yeah. to see what you've done. You've got the and you did it exactly. Thank you. Um, but, and, and again, not to make this into like a, hey, let's all like pat each other on the back kind of thing, but I'm, I'm very grateful to KW Media for having me today, for bringing me into the Keller Williams family, and particularly Phyllis, who is my sponsor. Um, because the thing is, I never intended to be a full time agent. Um, I don't even like the word full-time agent because that indicates that I have a job, but I run a business. Um, some other side stuff, like I'm just gonna start throwing stuff out. Make sure you have a P&L, get a coach, understand your business, what your profit margins are, what's working, what's not, so you can trim back on the stuff that's not, put money where you should be putting it, put it in the referrals. Um, none of this stuff was ever, ever on my radar. I was a fireman and I did this for friends and family, never ran it for like a business. I think the most I sold in a year were like two houses. Um, and I never, not that I was like, oh, I don't see it in myself. I was like, nah, that's not me. And Phil was like, yeah, I think it is. Um, and now it is. So, like, I have intentions to be a coach. I travel around my region and teach. Like, it's, it's a weird world, and I love it. And thank you. That's awesome. Now, can we, um, are you doing anything where we can give you a recommendation or we can tell you for training? So, th what's challenging is I am working to get KWU certified. However, because... This is a class that I made and it's not KW approved. Okay. Yeah. There's no way to collect any data on it. Okay. Um, but I mean, uh, you guys can tell me if I did a good job or a bad job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can say, we can help you in any way because you did do an excellent job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're very honored you know, that you came up here and did this mm -hmm. class for us, so we're really excited. And Thanks. Still coming down. Well, it's you know what? Well, if, if you do want to do something, um, Post them on my Facebook, like, hey, thanks for coming in and teaching on referrals. You know, tag yeah. me in some stuff, and that way, again, the algorithm is going to push me up, and people are going to be like, oh, Jay's teaching in Pennsylvania. No, Super no. cool. So just give me a shout out on Facebook or something. Just give me a minute, because I'm going to, I want to get anybody that was in the class that's not here, see if they can come back in, because I want to get a picture. I would love a picture. So we can put that again, on again, personal, okay. Right, so. Tell your story. Do I have to